Hello and welcome to a new video. My name is Sigi and I'm a Belgian running enthusiast. And in case you're wondering, this video is not sponsored whatsoever. The Saucony White 16 was released in April 2023. It has a stack height of 35 mm in the back and 27 mm in the forefoot, resulting in an 8 mm drop. The shoe weighs 295 grams in my size 46. If you have some experience with the Guide 16, then you quickly identify that the basic specifications are almost identical. Just the only difference is the Guide 16 weighs 10 grams more than the White 16. It's a neutral daily trainer suitable for running on the road or on a treadmill. Basically, the shoe is direct towards running in the summer but you can also use them during the other seasons of course yeah baby the shoe is ideal for your easy pace daily running up until half a marathon and yes of course they are also suitable for a speedy 5k if you really want to for me the shoe is true to size and the upper also feels great but durability wise i do have a bit my questions but more on that later on in the video the midsole and the outsole are identical to the white 15. The midsole is a Power One EVA based foam and if you didn't know this yet, it's a more entry level foam from Saucony. It is also a bit more firm and less responsive if you compare it to a Power One Plus foam, which is a TPU based foam. And yes, an EVA based foam is also known to be a little bit less durable. In the beginning at first, I had a bit of the feeling that the midsole required a bit of a break-in period, something that I didn't encounter on the Guide 16. But after a couple of runs, that already got a lot better. So not really a problem, to be honest. The midsole itself is also pretty resistant to the outside temperatures, meaning that you would have a comparable one if you would go out for a run in the summer or in the winter, which is something you don't have with the Guide 16, probably due to the usage of a Halotech plastic plate for additional stability. This is something that the white 16 doesn't have, perhaps to its advantage. The outsole is equipped with Saucony's XT900 Premium Rubber, which will give you the proper grip and also durability. It performs really good on road or even those mild trails, but if it's a bit wet, they might get a little bit slippery. The shoe also provides a little bit of stability, but those that tend to have an overpronation might be better off with the Guide 16, which is more suitable for that. The outer layer has an excellent breathability and ventilation, perfect for running in some warmer climates. As you can see, there are a lot of ventilation holes, even at the heel area. But yeah, due to all that ventilation, the amount of water that could get in also increases. For that reason, I do not recommend your feet will get wet and it will get mushy inside. The upper isn't too stretchy, but still feels really good. As I mentioned, for me, the shoe is true to size and even on a longer one, the upper still feels comfortable. Around the heel, there is also a good amount of padding to keep your foot in place and they are also very easy to put on. The heel area is also reinforced and goes around your complete heel, including the heel tab, which feels pretty secure. It also provides additional stability because it has additional padding and it's also a bit reinforced. Something that I would have found more logic to find this on the Guide 16 instead of on the White 16. But we have it on the White and it's an advantage. For the rest, it also has a gusseted tongue, which is also nicely padded. At first, because of the usage of the material, I was a bit afraid that it would heat up too much at the top of my foot. But after a couple of runs, I do need to confess, it is acceptable. It doesn't run too hot. And since it's the gusseted tongue, it also remains very good in place. Last but not least, we have the laces. Really big fan of these. Why? Because they have a little stretch in them. That's something I really like. And the length is also sufficient if you need to do the runner snap. Durability wise, I do have a bit more questions, but let me explain. The durability of the outsole is pretty good. There is hardly any wear and tear. On the other hand, the midsole, that seems a bit different. I was a bit more afraid of that with the Guide 16, but the white is worse. I don't know why, but the wear and tear is worse over here, and that only for 100 kilometers. Perhaps it's not going to be an issue, but that's difficult to predict at this point in time. We'll just have to wait and see. As I already briefly touched upon the durability of the laces, I already see some wear and tear. Perhaps it's because it's a more softer material. It could be there is a big chance that they need to be replaced before the shoe itself needs to be replaced. Because of that, my expectations for the Saucony White 16 is that it could reach up to 6 to 700 kilometers which is a big difference if you compare it to the guide 16 where my expectations are 7 to 800 kilometers but this is mainly due to the wear and tear that i already noticed at the midsole the tin upper which is not so premium if you compare it to the guide 16 and then also the quality of the laces 
To wrap up, the Sakani Wide 16 is a decent daily trainer suitable for your easy pace runs up until half a marathon and even a speedy 5k. The weight of the shoe, 295 grams, is also really good and the shoe will remain comfortable even on those longer ones. Do take into account that the midsole is a bit more stiff and it's a bit less responsive. The grip is also really good but it might get a bit slippery on wet surfaces. The upper feels really good, well ventilated and suitable for running in a bit warmer temperatures. Running in the rain on the other hand is not recommended unless if you like a mushy feeling. The shoe dries up a little bit quicker than the Guide 16 but still who likes wet shoes? The retail price for the Sakani Wide 16 is 150 euros which is the same as the Guide 16 but for me personally if I look at the durability of the shoe I find that a bit too much. For me personally, a price of around 120 euros would be more suitable for this. Because of that, I recommend if you would like to buy this shoe, check it out a little bit on the internet, on different websites, because I'm pretty sure you will be able to find this shoe for 120 euros or even less. So that's for me personally a good price. 150 euros, that's too much if you ask me. For the Guide 16, I agree. The price 150 euros, I completely agree. The durability is better on that shoe. The quality is also better, but the white, no thank you. 120 euros is more suitable. Well, that's it for my review of the Sokani White 16. And I'm pretty sure you still have one question that you would like to see answered. And that is, if I need to make a choice between the Guide 16 or the White 16, which would I choose? Well, both have their pros and their cons, but in the end, my decision goes to the Guide 16. Because it has a more premium upper, premium laces, and it also has the stability features which sometimes, for me personally also, could come in hand. For the rest, I hope you found this video informative. If you did, do not forget to like. If you want to follow the channel and all the upcoming content, do not forget to subscribe. And also do check out our new website, govower.run. I'm posting blogs, news articles, reviews, you name it. Go check it out, link in the description. And if you have any comments, any remarks, drop a comment down below and I'll get back to you as soon as possible. I thank you all for watching and I see you all in the next one. Bye.